Okay, so we're welcome to question nine of the 2017 paper one, Leave us to our ordinary level of maths. And we'll just get started here. There's a 10C question. So it's a low partial of four, a high partial of six. Now, like with all the long questions on the paper, seven, eight, nine, a lot of writing, <clears throat> a lot of reading. So just be careful going through it that you don't miss something. Um, so forensic scientists can estimate the height of a person from the length of their bones. One method uses a function which relates the length of the femur bone X to the height of the person. Using this method, the heights of males and females are estimated using the following functions. So your function for males and your function for females. <clears throat> and in there they give you that M of X is the height and X is the length of the femur. And it's the same thing in the second function, which we're calling an F function. F of X is the height and X is the length of the femur. So, actually, sorry, I meant to have that on the blank page. So, part A says, use the functions above to estimate the height of a male and the height of a female, each of whose femur is 47.54 centimeters in length. Give your answers to correct two dozen middle places. So, here's the answer here, okay? So, you have the male function is 2.3 2 times x plus 65.53. Our x value is 47.54, that's given to us in part A. Um, so put your x value in instead of the variable. Put it to the calculator, and for the male, I come up with 174.87 centimeters. I do exactly the same thing for the f function, the female function, and I came up with a value of 172.98 centimeters. Job done. Okay, so part B here says, and there's a 5B, so there's a uh, mid partial of 2. Uh, for max 5. Use your male function, the m of x, to estimate the femur length of a male whose height is 184 centimeters. And get, give your answer to two dozen places. So I've got the male function given to me in the question. And I'm being told in part b that the m of x value, m of the height of that male is 184 centimeters. So if you can see that the, the m of x is equal in both um, of these statements. So therefore I can put them equal to each other in this equation here. This now is an equation of one unknown, so I'm solving for the x. So you bring the 65.53 across the equal. It was added on the right, become subtracted on the left. Do that little sum, I end up with this statement down here. The 2.3 is multiplying by the x, so when it goes across the equal it becomes the opposite. So it becomes divided. Now remember the sign doesn't change, it's just changing the operator. Divide the 2.3 in to do that little sum here. I end up with 51.508. That'll round back to 51.51. Now I should have put in the units there. Okay. And the units there will be centimeters. So I may have lost, it depends on the marking scheme. I may have lost a mark or half a mark or a mark um, by not including the units. I'd have to go and look at the marking scheme to be, to be sure. Anyway, that's part B. Part C here says, Connor's femur length is 44.2 centimeters. His height is 171 centimeters. Find the percentage error in using m of x to estimate his height. So the answer here, okay. So we're using the function, okay, we're given his femur length, and we're working out what his height is based on the formula. That's all that's, that's, all that's happened here. We've done that a few times already. We're then told his actual height is 171 centimeters. So there is a discrepancy. Take those two values away, you see there's a discrepancy of 3.81 centimeters. Okay, now the formula you'd always use for this is the uh, difference over the actual multiplied by 100 to make a percentage. Okay, because we're asked to find a percentage error. Do that calculation the calculator, I end up with 2.228%, and then round that to two dozen places, it'd be 2.23%. That's the job done, it's fairly straightforward. I can, okay, it's a complicated question in how it's written here. But again, if you break it down and to have a, have uh, just you know, think about it, you should be able to realize what's necessary. Okay, so part D here, find the length of a femur for which the estimated height of a male and the estimated height of a female are the same. So basically saying when both functions are the same. Now if they're the same, it means they're equal to each other. Okay, so there's my two functions, my male function and my female function. And I'm putting them equal to each other because that's what the question is stating. I have a big long jumble of stuff here, okay, but if you look at it, there is only one unknown, it's the x value, 
So I'm going to try solve for x. So I'm going to bring x to one side, numbers to the other. Uh, it's kind of complicated because there's decimals, but look, this, it's, it's just the same thing as a number. You're just going to keep it going, okay, and be careful. So I'm bringing all the numbers to one side. I'm bringing all the x's to one side, okay? Remember, when something goes across equal, as I said a few times already, even in this question, it changes the operator. So the 54.13 was added on the right, becomes subtracted going across to the left. The 2.3x was positive or added on the left, becomes subtracted on the right. Do those two sums, I end up with 11.4 equals 0.2x. So it's 0.2 times x, bring the 0.2 across the equal, becomes the opposite, becomes divided. Put it to the calculator, I got 57. Okay. So 57 centimeters is the femur, femur length, okay? And then it says, find the estimated height of the person, okay? And I'm using the uh, male function here, and I'm f finding out that when I put the 57 into the male function here, I get 196.63, okay? And that's the estimated height. Okay, so... I should get the same answer if I use the f function as well, the female, the female function. So that's part D. Now part E here, we're looking at a 5C scale. Now this, the ponderal index is a number which relates a person's height to their weight. The formula for this index, okay, the ponderal index given the value of the, the symbol P, is P equals the person's weight, so the M, mass, weight, whatever, divided by their height cubed. So this is, that's the formula, okay, you just have to accept that it's true, okay. So this part one here says, find the ponderal index for a person who is 1.60 meters tall and weighs 72.5 kilograms. Give your answer to one decimal place. It's okay, so I have my formula, put my two values, so there's three unknowns in the formula, I'm given two of them, so it's an equation of one unknown, and put it to the calculator, I got 17.7. .7. Okay, now we'll move on from that. So here's E part two. Now, okay. now apologies, I just realized with this question nine, E part two, I don't have a blank um, a slide, whatever. So, so the answer is just uncovered. Anyway, so it's a simple enough question. It says rearrange the formula P equals M divided by H to so the power of three to give a formula which will give the height of a person in terms of their weight and the p, the p value, the ponderal index. So basically it's saying, rearrange the equation, so h is the subject, or you have h on one side, everything else the far side. Okay, so really this is basic algebra, you're not uh, being asked to put numbers in, you're just rearranging an equation. And that's always kind of the smart thing to do <clears throat> when you're doing with equation. Uh, something we've been taught in college, you know, in, in some science degree, is to always rearrange for the unknown and then sub the numbers in and then you can let the calculator do the the heavy lifting um now it can be tricky but if you care for your algebra and consistent you, these things should be bread and butter and if they're not you have to consider you know like it ultimately doing more study and maybe going back to those sections in algebra and practicing the revision chapters or you know and making sure that you're, you're you've got a proficient level of algebra because um, it is the basis of all the maths paper, okay, and you, you feel me focus a lot on the methodology. So, if I'm looking at the equation here and going, okay, I want h on its own, how do I achieve that? Now, at the moment, h is on the bottom, on the right-hand side, so it's it's in an awkward position. So, see, can I do anything to to to, to fix that? Now, if I bring the h three across the equal, what's going to happen? It was divided on the right, it'll be multiplied on the left. So I'm doing that, okay, and so now I have a linear, okay, things look a little bit simpler, and I go, right, I want the h on one side, the p needs to move. So the p is multiplied on the left, when it comes across the equal, it becomes divided, okay. So right now I've achieved the h on its own. Now this cube here is getting, is getting in the way, I don't want h cubed, I want h, so if I move the, move the cube across the equal, just like a square root, it becomes the opposite, the opposite of a, of a cube is a cube root. And so I end up just saving here. So it's cube root of everything on the far side. And this looks weird, but that's that's it. That's the answer. Job done. Okay, so I'm going to move on to part three here. Now, Mary has a ponderal index of 13 and a weight of 67.5 kilograms. Find her height. 
So again, if you have the formula, you have two of the three unknowns. So there's my formula. Now I'm using the one I just worked out, okay, because I don't have to do any messing. I can just directly just plug the numbers in and go straight to the answer. Okay, now I could have used the original ponderal thing, input the numbers and then rearranged, but it's just more work, so why? Okay, so I put my numbers in 67.5 for the mass or the weight, uh, 13 for the ponderal index. Put to the, the calculator and be careful that you're making it look just like that. And I go for a height of 1.73, okay, and that's 1.73 uh, meters. And I should have put the meters in there again. I think I've lost two marks already um, because of lack of units. So again, I suppose I'm, I should claim I'm doing that for illustration purposes, but it's so, so important to make sure you have units for every question. Even at the end of the exam, I go back and I check the answers for every question, make sure I put the correct units in. You could catch a mark or two or three, and again, that could be the difference between a grade change. So that's part three done. And that seems to be it. Okay, so that's the end of uh, 2017 paper one. Uh, see you in paper two, and I hope this was a help to you, and best of luck.